Please welcome Phil DeLuna, University of Toronto. Hello, my name is Phil DeLuna and I'm an adjunct professor at the University of Toronto in the Department of Materials Science and Engineering. My research has focused on converting carbon dioxide into renewable fuels and chemicals using electricity. I first met Staff Sheehan, the CTO of the Air Company, a few years ago in the Carbon X Prize a $20 million competition to capture and convert the most CO2 into a useful product. We were competitors back then. I am so thrilled and honored to nominate The Air Company for this year's Falling Walls Venture Award. The Air Company has been able to take technology that converts carbon dioxide into everything from consumer vodka to hand sanitizer to soon jet fuel. They have cracked the code in being able to economically convert carbon dioxide into the base chemicals and fuels that we need to sustain a net zero future. Breaking the wall of climate change. Stafford Sheehan, Air Company. Hey everybody, thanks very much for the introduction to Phil, even though he's not here. Thank you for hosting us, AC. Thank you to all the Falling Walls folks for all the hard work you all did to, to get all of us startups here. Um, really honored to be here. I uh, come from the far off land of New York. Um, my name is Stafford. I'm the co-founder and chief technology officer of Air Company. Um, and with a name like Air Company, that we could be doing a lot of things. But what, what is the specific technology that we do? Because I'm speaking to an audience of folks that are mostly either tech startups or have a bit of a technical background. I figured I'd start by actually saying what Air Company does from a technology perspective. Um, we take in carbon dioxide and we uh, take renewable electricity and water. We split that water into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas using an electrolyzer. We take that hydrogen gas and we co combine that with the carbon dioxide that we captured and we put that into our reactor. So the things that you see on the left uh, in, this, in this picture are uh, we use partners and we use different, um, you know, different partner companies and groups to capture the carbon dioxide and generate the hydrogen. This is our technology, uh, which um, is a catalyst that converts the carbon dioxide into our products, namely ethanol and aviation fuel. How are we different from competitors and other companies that are making sustainable aviation fuel and ethanol and other things like that from carbon dioxide? Well, we do it in a single step process. So we actually take the carbon dioxide and the hydrogen, put them into a single reactor, convert that into our process. Legacy processes, such as the Fischer-Tropes process, have process efficiencies maximum around 20 to 30 percent typical chemical to chemical conversion efficiencies for that is actually closer to 10 percent in practice um, our process energy efficiency is over 50 percent um, how do we know this because we've actually deployed the technology um, we have two consumer products in market you can go out and buy air company's fragrance product right now we ship to europe aircompany.com sales pitch for that um, this is how we actually make our money. So we're a revenue generating company currently. Um, and we actually sell, uh, or we've consistently sold out of the only vodka in the world that's made from carbon dioxide in a single step. Um, we got our FDA approval for this a couple years ago. We started the company in 2017. And uh, you can get this vodka if you go to certain bars and restaurants in New York City. We couldn't sell it anywhere else because honestly, it sells out within, we sell out about a month's production in about an hour. Um, the product is in insanely high demand right now, which is great for us in a lot of ways. As we scale up our technology, we're actually going to these different consumer product markets through other verticals, so through things like licensing. And then gradually, um, we're going into world-scale production where we can really have a major impact toward fighting climate change. Our earlier, uh, actually last month, we announced the first ever flight of an airplane with carbon dioxide derived aviation fuel, 100% synthetic carbon dioxide derived aviation fuel in partnership with the United States Air Force. Um, and we're currently under contract for over 1 billion gallons of sustainable aviation fuel that will sequester over, uh, over around uh, 100 million tons of carbon dioxide. How are we gonna do this? Well, this is the pilot plant that we current, currently operate in Brooklyn, New York. Um, you can see the kind of containerized system we have right there. We call this our system 2.0. Um, 1.0 is a lab scale system. Out of this pilot plant, we make enough ethanol for our consumer goods. Uh, well, at least enough ethanol for the demand that, um, that we thought we'd have. We have a demand that's much higher than that right now. Um, 
for our vodka product and for our fragrance product. Um, the, you can think of those two products kind of as champion products because they reduce the cost of producing things like the aviation fuel by making a very high uh, low volume, high margin product. So you can think of the amount of money that we can make from a gallon of ethanol when we make vodka is in the hundreds of dollars. Whereas when you sell it as a commodity, you make you know, on the order of you know, single digit dollars or euros. Um, this facility operates 24 seven. We have around 60 people in the business now um, and is currently producing both ethanol and aviation fuel for our work with the US government. Now, we're trying to scale this, of course, and we are currently building System 3.0, which is a hundred, wait for the, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> there it is, uh, which is about a uh, hundred times the size of this pilot facility you see in New York. Um, and the goal, uh, eventually, as we scale these facilities toward world scale, is to reduce global carbon dioxide emissions by around 10.8%. So we can do this by making the three products that we currently make on the small scale at world scale. Thank you very much. Where is the vodka? Where is the flag runs? Uh, I, got, I got some back ah, there. Okay. I didn't wanna... Good, you're my neighbor. Okay, <laughs> so um, let's take the questions now. Who would like to start? Four minutes, please, can we start? And Anna is gonna start the four minutes. Thank you very much. Um, have you done a life cycle assessment of your technology compared not to the fossil-based process, but for, uh, compared to the other electrolysis-based processes? Yeah, so typical sustainable aviation fuels are around 80% uh, reduce the greenhouse gas emissions of fossil fuels by around 80%. We're 97% largely because of the improvements that we have to, um, improvements that we have to the process efficiency but then also secondarily to the fact that we're able to balance renewable energy in the grid. So we can soak up energy when, when grids are producing too much renewable energy, and we can uh, you know, use that energy to produce our fossil fuels. That's actually what our currently under construction system does. Um, it's a grid service in addition, so it's, think of it as a kind of like a battery plus uh, a fuel production plant. Okay, who would like to take the second question? Yes, Stefan, please. Just the microphone is coming. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. What makes your production so expensive these days, or what limits your production levels? Well, really just the fact that you have to put steel in the ground to build these. Um, and it takes time, and it takes capex. Um, so we're actually building the next system, but because we have to build 120-foot reactors, you know, those take the lead times on those are around you know, 70 weeks on that order. Um, the demand for the products, though, that, that scales up much faster than putting actual steel in the ground. So that's where we're at right now. We're actually producing all of those. We're producing the larger systems to be able to meet the demand we currently have. Mm -hmm. Next question here at the back, please. Thank you so much also to all of you bringing the microphone at the right time to the people asking. Thank you. Hi, super exciting technology. Um, could you speak a little bit to the challenges you face scaling this up from lab scale to your pilot plant and then going forward from pilot to your 100x scale up that you're building now? Numerous challenges going from lab to pilot scale over the last five and change years. Um, first off, if you think something is stable in the laboratory, it's not stable on your pilot plant. Um, and uh, you know, we learned that. We had to pivot a few times on some of our materials. Um, second off, Making things on like the 100 kilogram scale is really challenging. The first time we made our, our catalyst for the pilot plant, which is 100 kilograms, we actually had to make it in 100 gram batches. And so we just did that one synthesis a thousand times over, which was a bit of a grueling task. Um, but you know, we solved both those problems. Um, we did it, you know, in some ways the hard way and the long way, and in other ways we, uh, you know, we were able to, you know, luckily nature kind of lined up for us and let us uh, find an easier route. Um, as we're scaling up, one of the biggest challenges, now that we've shown that we can scale the catalyst, we've shown that we can scale the, the technology, um, one of the biggest challenges is actually going from the, uh, removing the heat of reaction. So in that pilot plant, we use hot oil to heat and cool the reactor that we have. Uh, on commercial scale, you actually use water, you use steam. So these water-cooled reactors, you know, for uh, an exothermic reaction like ours, can be used to generate additional electricity. Um, and all of these things are really well known. You do them in a Fisher Tropes plant today. Um, but just doing that for our particular technology is one of the challenges that we face. So 
you know, we've de-risked things like the catalyst, we've de-risked things like the fundamental science of it, um, and now we're at the point of tackling the engineering risk of going from pilot plant to world scale. Okay, we have 30 seconds for a very short question here, and a very short answer, please. So what about the price point in euro per ton when you're at full scale? Thank you. Uh, we're the same price as fossil fuel at full scale. Okay, that was a fast question and a fast answer. Thank you very much for, Tom, for this. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. And let's move on to the next one.